If you're a gamer, you've probably seen the Sony PlayStation 4. To date, over 75 million PlayStation 4 boxes have sold. Given those statistics, it's understandable that the PlayStation 4 has gotten a lot of scrutiny. In our teardown, we'll look at some of the design decisions that went into devising the game box. PlayStation 4 disassembles relatively easily if you have the right Torx screwdrivers. The only complication we encountered were security screws on some of the panels. This assembly starts by sliding off a plastic cover hiding the slot for a hard drive which users can replace. The Torx screws hold the rest of the plastic covers in place. Removing a couple of stickers on the back of the plastic case reveals the first T9 security screws, so-called because they have a post in the middle. The bottom of the plastic case comes off to reveal the cooling fan, the optical drive, and the plastic case for the switching power supply. Several more security screws and Phillips screws hold in these components. A metal shield then comes off to reveal the drive board for the optical drive. The optical drive, optical driver, board, and power supply module all come out once the screws are removed and cable connectors are disconnected. Next, the top plastic lid can be pried off to reveal a flat metal chassis that provides attach points for the optical drive, power supply, fan, heat sink, and motherboard. Removing several security screws allows the metal chassis to lift out to reveal the back of the PlayStation 4 motherboard. The heart of the PlayStation 4 is a custom-made processor chip. Clearly dissipates an appreciable amount of power because it mounts directly to the beefy metal heatsink sitting in front of the cooling fan. It is also big. Reports we've seen put the total chip area at 348 square millimeters, a little over a half inch square. It's also been reported that the chip contains a graphics processor comprised of 18 compute units. In graphics processing, the compute units are comparable to the cores of conventional microcontrollers. And the chip also has eight conventional CPU cores as well. The processor die has a lot of thermal paste, giving a reliable connection to the massive heatsink attached to the metal chassis. One mysterious component is a metal shield that surrounds the main processor chip. Metal shields positioned on circuit boards are usually there to prevent EMI, but this one has numerous holes in it that would limit its effectiveness as an EMI shield. We're guessing that it may be there to help distribute heat more evenly around the large main processor die. So one part of the die doesn't operate at a temperature that is significantly different from that of the other parts. But though the main processor chip contains multiple GPUs and CPUs, the PlayStation 4 has other processors to handle different parts of the computational load. They're all custom chips. We found one that handles network operations carrying the SCEI label for Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated. You can tell it handles network processing because it sits right behind a chip from Marvell that is an Ethernet controller. Similarly, there is at least one ASIC on the board that probably assists in processing chores, but there aren't any clues about what it might be doing. It sits near the Ethernet processor and the connection for the optical drive. The main processor works in conjunction with a lot of memory. There are eight Samsung graphic memory chips on the main side of the board comprising four gigabytes total and another eight Samsung chips on the other side of the board comprising another four gigabytes. These are dubbed GDDR5, standing for Graphics Double Data Rate 5. This is a type of synchronous RAM optimized to facilitate larger frame buffers for graphically intensive computations that characterize video gaming. Also worth noting is that GDDR5 uses a total of three clocks, two right clocks and one command clock. Speaking of clocks, the PlayStation 4 board contains a clock synthesis chip from IDT. It seems to be a special version, so there's no data sheet available that we could find. But to judge by the connections on the PCB, the IDT chip probably handles clocking for the Ethernet interface. There's also speculation that it has a role in synchronizing clocks for the main processor chip and the network processor, because there are board traces running between the IDT chip and both processors. In the same general area of the board as the IDT chip and the network processor is a Marvell chip that handles Ethernet connections. Apparently, it is the same kind of chip as on the PlayStation 3. 
Also in this vicinity are a couple of chips whose functions aren't clear. One is a serial flash memory chip from Micronix. Speculation is that it serves to capture gameplay, screenshots, or video clips for sharing. There's a second memory chip in the area, a 2 gigabyte Samsung DDR3 static RAM. This sits near the interface for the optical drive, so it's possible to have something to do with data coming in from the Blu-ray interface. The disk interface is a Genesis Logic USB 3.0 hub controller, which incorporates its own 8-bit microprocessor. Also at this end of the board is the Wi-Fi module. This is a small circuit board enclosed by a metal shield that contains three main ICs. One is a Marvell Wide Area LAN Bluetooth FM system on a chip. The other two are RF front ends from Skyworks. One interesting bit about this module is that two of its antennas consist of PCB traces that can be seen on the PCB that have lengths consistent with Bluetooth and wide area LAN wavelengths. The third, maybe for FM, is a discrete wire that runs across the top of the PlayStation. That brings us to the part of the PCB near the front panel of the PlayStation. This part holds the power circuitry that charges the remote controls which plug into two jacks on the front panel. The main power circuits consist of six Vichet Siliconix synchronous buck power stages. They connect to an Infineon buck regulator sitting on the bottom side of the PCB. The Infineon part seems to be generating the various power signals used by the ASICs, SOCs, and so forth. Powering such ICs get to be a bit tricky because they generally use multiple power rails that must be turned on in specific sequences when the chip comes to life. Also on the bottom of the PCB lies the Genesis Logic USB hub controller chip that seems to handle the remote control ports on the PlayStation's front panel. Rounding out the rest of the chips on the main board are an 8-bit MCU and Wimbon 1 megabit flash near the ports. The PCB connections indicate that this processor exchanges a lot of data with a network processor. The HDMI video controller is from Panasonic and also sits on the bottom of the PCB. There, too, is another custom ASIC and another Winbon serial flash chip, both near the connector for the optical drive. The serial flash chip has connections running to the Sony ASIC chip on the other side of the board, while the custom ASIC seems to be mainly connected to the optical drive interface. Finally, there is a temperature sensing chip from On Semiconductor sitting near the digital optical audio output jack. It also seems to have a connection going to this jack. This jack is used for connections to surround sound or home theater systems. It's not entirely clear what the temperature sensor is sensing and that it sits nowhere near any circuits that consume a lot of power. We can now turn to the controller board for the Blu-ray optical disc. There is one big custom ASIC made by Renesis on the board another smaller chip whose markings we couldn't identify, a little 8-bit MCU from ST Microsystems, and a spindle motor controller chip from Rome. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of this board is the sizable solder-stripped copper isolators it contains. One separates the ST Microsystems MCU from the rest of the board. The second sits alongside one of the long edges of the controller board. They're a bit mysterious. There are no high voltages circulating on the board and the copper strips wouldn't seem to be effective at limiting EMI because they don't enclose anything. So we're stumped by what they're doing there. Finally, we can note a few things about the PlayStation 4 power supply and cooling fan. The power supply exhibits much simpler technology than the rest of the device. The PCB is single-sided and two main chips handle the key switching tasks. One is an on-semiconductor chip that generates a PWM signal. One of its key attributes is an ability to throttle back in the event of low load as a way of meeting standby and no load energy efficiency guidelines. The other chip is a resonant mode controller based on a push-pull switching regulator. The resonant mode operation is so named because there is typically a tank circuit involved that generates a sinusoidal waveform. The reason there are two separate switching circuits is probably because the supply circuit generates two supply voltages. There are also several smaller ICs on the power supply PCB that we couldn't identify, but most switching supplies involve the use of optocouplers as a means of getting feedback from the supply output. 
So we suspect that the small ICs we couldn't identify may be optocouplers used for that purpose. The cooling fan on the PlayStation 4 uses what's called a six-pole DC brushless motor, also sometimes called an electronically commutated motor. Here, commutation refers to the act of switching the electrical connection from one motor winding to the next one. The resulting magnetic field works against alternating poles of permanent magnets to generate motion. The PlayStation 4 fan motor has the magnets in its rotor. DC motor with the magnets in the rotor is sometimes called an outrunner. There are other possible configurations, but they're not as widely used as outrunners. The PlayStation probably uses a brushless motor in its fan because these types are typically 85 to 90 percent efficient, largely because most of the energy going into the coils actually moves the rotor. This is in contrast with another less expensive type of motor found in fans, the shaded pole type induction motor. The efficiency of shaded pull motors generally is only between 15 and 30 percent, and the power factor is rather low as well. That's about it for our PlayStation 4 teardown. We won't be playing Call of Duty anytime soon on this particular game platform. For more teardown videos like this one, visit eeworldonline.com.